very, very exciting day, I know, for this neighborhood, but also for our city and for myself. Um, you know, the mayor I've heard mentioned many, many times, especially when he comes out into the neighborhoods and a lot of my staff, that you all want to have more stuff to do in our neighborhoods. You want more stuff for your kids, for yourself, to have opportunities to come to something, to be able to enjoy it. And I want to say you've been hurt. There was a historic investment that happened with the leadership of our mayor and your council persons and council people from Councilor Trammell, from Councilor Jones, mm -hmm. Dr. Newbill, Councilor Robinson, all the different council people that have supported this historic investment in our ARPA funds. So we're really excited to be here today to kick off this engagement. We really want to also make people understand that this is just the first process of listening to what you all want to see happen. So we heard that you wanted this investment. Now we want to also hear how you want to see this investment even more to the level. We know we want to see these facilities, we want to see community centers, but what type of things do you want to see in these community centers? So we're going to go over all that today. You know, we know there's a lot of history. We want to hear about that history. We want to hear about the things that we need to sort of celebrate and some of the things we want to look for towards the future. So this is your chance, but it's just the first. There'll be many other opportunities. We're going to build out a survey that we'll send out to individuals and we'll also have at least two more community engagements just to make sure we're getting the, what we've heard right. But we're going to come back to you. We have a really strong team of individuals that are out here, which we'll introduce to you later. But one thing I really want to, uh, I'm always thrilled to introduce what I have said many, many times, the best mayor we have in this country, Mayor LeVar Stoney, who supports our city beyond anyone else that I can imagine. But I am so happy to introduce him to let him kick off this event, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Give a round of applause for Chris real quick. You know, when I began my time as mayor, I brought Chris in from, uh, he came from Raleigh. And I said, that's that other capital city uh, in North Carolina to the south of us. And I said, I want to be better than Raleigh. Uh, and I also want there to be some balance to how we go about uh, delivering parks and recreation to our different communities. And he knew from, from that interview on that, yes, we have beautiful parks, but they're also we have to focus on how we provide better programming for our kids and our seniors as well. And I gotta say, he's lived up to every every expectation I've had for Parks and Recreation. Chris, thank you for your service. Thank you for your leadership as well. All right, I'm gonna get right down to it. I was knocking on doors in uh, Davie Gardens in 2016. I don't remember who it was. <laughs> well, someone said, you see that over here? Y'all gotta do something about that. It's been here for so many years. And it just, it's just not, y'all just, y'all all failing, y'all all falling off on the job. I remember hearing that. I heard the same thing at Lux Field in East End as well, about the closest facility they had up there was in Henrico County. I said, we gotta do something about this. Now who knew that in 2021, that we would be the recipient of American Rescue Plan Act dollars from President Biden. I'm grateful for President Biden, for Mark Warner, Tim Kaine, for the work they've done to allow for Richmond to be the recipient of $155 million. $155 million, no strings attached. So it comes down to how do you use these dollars? And so our priority has been this. We want to invest in children, we want to invest in families, and we want to invest in neighborhoods. And so we're using half of that money, half of the $155 million, to invest in those three things. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna renovate and build four new community centers in Richmond. Four, long overdue. And there's the thing, I want the amenities that show up here in South Richmond, the same amenities that people get in the West End, they should get in the South Side as well. Yes. Am I wrong? Yes. You're right. All right. It's long overdue. And so I was proud when we invested in finally paving the roads over here the first time in 30 some years. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But we need to give equal attention to the facilities that our children use and our families use as well. And so this is the opportunity, not just for Richmond, but for South Richmond. And so today it begins. We are going to create a facility that matters to you. And in order to get to that point where it matters to you, you all have to provide your input. What do you want? 
What do you want to see? You've been to other facilities. You've seen this facility right here. What does it already lack? How can it be better? How can you all do business right here in your community without going all the way to downtown to do business? Think about how this will serve, not just for you for 2022, but beyond 2022. I've heard you, I've listened, and I'm glad that we put this at the top of the list of our priorities for the years to come. So be honest with us. Don't hold anything back. We got thick skin, right? Right, everybody? We got thick skin, Chris? We did. Tell us what's wrong, but tell us what you want to see in the future T.B. Smith community. So can y'all do that for me? Can you do that for me? Oh, I know some of y'all will let us know the real deal. And we are open ears for all of it, okay? All right. Thank y'all for coming out on your Saturday afternoon. You could be anywhere else in the city or on this earth, but you chose to be right here. I appreciate your commitment to your community. Thank y'all. Thank you, man. Thank you. I also just wanted to note that Councilor Trammell had a funeral today and was not able to attend, but she did want to be here. And as you all are aware of, she and Councilor Jones, as I mentioned, were huge supporters of this funding. And so we're very excited to get this started. And I would like to um, actually introduce our design team. So we have got a, a group of consultants on board from uh, the Timmons Group and also from Baskerville. And leading that group for us will be Mr. Bert Penna and uh, Scott Wiley. Do I need the microphone? I'm going to use the microphone. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, again, my name is Bert Pennock. Uh, I'm an architect. My colleague Scott Riley, who's a landscape architect, uh, we're charged with, by the city to lead the design of this process. And as the mayor said, and as Chris said, it doesn't work without your engagement and above all your participation. And so how do we begin to think about a center of the community, a community center at the center of the community that is intended to serve a very diverse and culturally rich community. And that's why we're here for you to tell us. Um, thank you. And so hopefully you can kind of see these slides, but if not, it's okay, we will work with what we also have on the fence over here, taped to the fence. A lot of what we're showing there is up here on the screen, and we'll talk about that a little more. We're gonna talk about these as inspirations for you to just start thinking highly about what will be here on this site. And again, it's to broaden the imagination. It is by no means all-inclusive. It is, you have thoughts, you have ideas, you have needs, that we need we want to hear about so what i'm going to ask scott to do is talk a little bit about the site first the particulars of this and then we'll get into some of that and at the end of that i'm going to ask you to come over there with us with pen in hand paper in hand and again write down what your needs are because again you are our clients and without you telling us what to do we don't know what to do Okay, well, we're not going to bother looking at the site photographs uh, for this project because you can look around you and you can see the character of what's here today. Um, some of the things that we'll point out are some of the existing recreational amenities that are here already um, and some of the different site features that may be celebrated in this new community center and park. Um, some of the things that jump out to me as a landscape architect are these beautiful trees. Trees are a precious resource in our city. Uh, and we don't have enough of them. And so, you know, figuring out which of these trees are the healthiest and, and most sustainable for uh, keeping into the future, we're gonna, we're gonna assess that. Uh, we've got existing blacktops here for basketball, hopscotch, all kinds of activity for the kids, but maybe they can be better utilized and better organized with a future park that complements the community center. Um, we have a lot of infrastructure here from the existing center over here to a school facility immediately adjacent that may also be a part of the conversation. And so we're here to listen to you and what you uh, really love about what's here today. And so we can preserve it and celebrate it and enhance it for what comes tomorrow. 
Um, so that's what's on the, the site photographs behind us. Bert, do you have the clicker? Oh. I realize you can't see this map either, but um, we're almost in sequential order as we start near the entrance table over here and, and moving left. So we'll work in that order and we can go talk in more detail about these uh, in just a few minutes. Um, but what we're showing here is just the surrounding neighborhoods. We know the Davy Gardens neighborhood is obviously the most adjacent, most proximate to this center. Um, we have some unique neighbors on either side too and some infrastructure challenges that create some barriers to walkability uh, and access to the site with 95 not far away. We can hear it right now um, with the CSX Railroad just uh, to the west of us over here. Um, luckily, there's good access across the railroad to bring people here, so that's not as much of a barrier, but there aren't as many neighborhoods to the north uh, from here. We've got the neighbor, which is the big Lowe's distribution facility. For those who may not know it, that's what that building is. Um, you know, whether we like them there or not, that is our neighbor, and so we need to figure out how to co-locate and to, to deal with it. There are things we can do in landscape and in architecture to screen or embrace, you know, that adjacency. Um, so there's a lot of things about this site that are unique, but we understand the communities around here uh, have good access to this facility. Um, on one of these exhibits, we've shown a walk shed radius, so uh, how many homes and rooftops are within a five minute walk of this park. Uh, we've got over a thousand rooftops. And as you extend that out to a 10 minute walk, we're reaching tens of thousands of people that could potentially walk here. Uh, we've got decent uh, street infrastructure to allow uh, folks coming in by bike. Uh, we have bus routes from GRTC that run right along Ruffin Road uh, and just a couple blocks uh, west of here. So there is public transit with access to this site. So it's poised well uh, for development and investment. As I said, th this center for the community not only touches on the ideas of what recreation and amenities are, but my question to you would be, what does it mean for this to be a center of community for well-being, a center of community for education, a center of community for inclusivity, a center of community for diversity, a center of community for health, any number of those things. So as the mayor said, this is like a like having a, a city hall in your neighborhood. And those are the questions that I would ask of you. I know that we have some folks who aren't here because of any number of types of barriers to coming to an event like this, to understanding what the opportunities are for them. And I want you to help us also reach them. So. I need everybody's voice. So I'm, I'm going to go grab a board while you talk about some stuff. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. So we are looking to extract as much out of you as we possibly can today. That's why we're here. Um, we don't come, Bert and I don't come as designers with any preconceived notions on what this facility and what this park are supposed to be. Uh, this is for your community and we're absolutely going to listen as a first step before we do anything and there will be multiple opportunities to engage along the way um, so we're excited about that uh, we have a series of image imagery that Bert is going to bring over and you'll have the opportunity to comment on some of the things you like or don't like about them and also propose new ideas things that we haven't thought of or brought to the table today you'll have the opportunity to write that down post them up on these boards. We're gonna collect all of that feedback and, and use that as a starting point for this entire process. Um, one of the things I failed to mention, we've got a great site here with about 12 acres of land. You can see the existing community center over here is sitting on a parcel that is only about an acre. Uh, so it doesn't take a lot of land to, to build a really strong community center. And so that leaves a, a wealth of opportunity to create a really nice park. So the green space in, in, in this location is almost as important as the community facilities that'll be within the building itself. So, everybody watch Wheel of Fortune. Okay. All right. So we're. Uh, you pull up this line. Okay. I'm going to go in order. All right. So some of the imagery you're seeing here shows uh, a, a large open green space, right? This may be about the 12 acre scale of the site. You're seeing some really good walkability and connectivity, access to 
um, you know, just a, a simple walking trail or outdoor fitness. Um, you're also seeing, and it's hard to see in the image to the right, how we can deal with stormwater. One of the realities of any kind of new development these days are we have to deal with stormwater and embrace it. And we can think about that in a very sustainable way. Um, there are new techniques in, in development that allow us to integrate that into the fabric of the site and not just be a hole in the ground where we expect water to go and, and deliver you know, elsewhere down the, the watershed. So we can take advantage of that and celebrate it, reuse it for irrigation or other functions on site. So there's lots of opportunities in how we can work with creative things like that. This image is a, I'll call it a social swing. Um, this is uh, along the Cincinnati Riverfront uh, outside of the Red Stadium. And while there's no stadium in this location, we see in this image community coming together, opportunity for social interaction to happen, for conversation, for community. Um, is there something unique that we could do here that is a statement piece and is representative of your community that creates a place to come together? Um, that's what this image is showing to us. So, you know, be thinking about uh, ways that we could do that here. So we're thinking about this center as a multi-generational center, right? We have things for all ages uh, that are our activity in the community. One of them is engaging our youth. Um, I was hoping we would see more young faces out here, but please go spread the word that there, this is going to be a center for the youth as well. And creating a destination type of play that is iconic in the neighborhood. There's opportunities that go beyond just plastic and metal play structures. Uh, we have an opportunity to bring art and community together in our play spaces, and we really want to do that here. So be thinking about some of those things that are unique to your community that we could bring into play and to engage the youth. This black top that we are standing on, um, it's striped for basketball, it's striped for hot hopscotch, all kinds of other games. Um, there are different ways we can get creative with blacktops. We can still create basketball courts and other active play features, but they can also become art and part of the community. So it's almost like a tapestry and a canvas when we're developing some of these features in the landscape. Um, and again, just another opportunity to create a, a unique sense of place. So pickleball is something that is uh, sweeping the nation right now, right, in parks and recreation. People love pickleball. Um, maybe it's not pickleball in your community, but what is that one thing that brings people together and creates opportunity for recreation, creates opportunity for people to engage in the outdoors? Um, we want to know that. There's a, an active skate and bike community in this area of the city and other areas of the city, and the city's investing in that. There's a, a skate park going up and about to open its doors at Southside Community Center. Is there opportunity to bring uh, kids out and, and create a space for them here in this neighborhood? Just some of the things we're thinking about. I love the image on the right. Um, this is a simple outdoor fitness piece of equipment, but what you see in that image is, is three genera two generations side by side. You've got like, a young child who's just kind of learning what this little elliptical machine is, a man that looks like he probably does this every day as part of his fitness routine, um, and then in the background you've got an older generation that's just come out of a wheelchair and is providing access to the same type of facilities, the same type of recreation activity. Uh, to maintain our health, right? It's an important part of what we do in our daily routines. Um, so how do we create a place for health here for all ages, all abilities? Um, we're thinking about those things. And again, the image on the left just shows how we can take play and make sure that it's universal play. Um, it's important for us to design places for all generations, ages, abilities, uh, and so forth. And so that's what this center will, will focus on for sure. Just a couple more slides here, and then Bert's going to share a few inspiration images of maybe the building tying together that whole fabric. So this is fun. 
Um, again, just some, some examples of play. You know, these pieces of play equipment that you see on the two left images are not your typical piece of play equipment. They are, they are art, they are creative, they are designed by the communities in which they serve, and we think that there's opportunity to do that here. Um, access to water, whether it's a pool, a spray ground, something more creative, there are opportunities to do that here. Um, Richmond is oppressively hot in the summertime, right? Um, we value our trees. We also value access to water play. Our children, um, you know, we all need that to, to cool off in the summertime. So is there an opportunity to do that here? And what ideas do you have uh, for us? So parks and community centers uh, are successful in the summertime when we have access to shade and shelter. We have places for family reunions. We have places to celebrate birthday parties in the community. Um, we think having access to those types of facilities as a part of this park, but maybe separated from the community center are equally as important to the community center building itself. Um, so we're showing some examples of that. We've talked about the beautiful urban tree canopy we have here, um, but there's almost nothing as we look out uh, across you know to the north and so how do we plan for the future generation of trees as well with this facility so 50 years from now we can look up and we can see beautiful oak trees like that elsewhere in the park those are the things we're thinking about oh yeah and i'm gonna actually i'm gonna back up because i didn't hit on something initially there's a board when you walked in and it said um, a center of community celebration right and I think when I talk about celebration, what we want to be able to do, again, is celebrate the things that are unique to this. The mayor mentioned that there are four of these across the city here, but they are unique places. This is a unique community, and it is understanding that uniqueness that we want to draw out and celebrate with that. Um, we talk about sustainability. But not only environmental sustainability, how do we sustain this environmentally? That's very important. But what does social sustainability mean? What does cultural sustainability mean in this type of thing? What does it mean for generations to come? This is not a five-year project. This is a generational project. So that's where we are. So uh, a lot of the things that Scott uh, talked about is activities on the outside in this area sort of want to then tie themselves inside. For example, we're we're outside under this tent. If we had one of those lovely shade structure ideas, we'd have a different sort of environment to sort of feed in. And some of this is driven just by the circumstances of the last three years. Right? What does it mean to be able to sort of translate exterior or outdoor activities to an interior space and vice versa so that we can have that flexibility, so we can have that well-being within our spaces, um, indoor playing, basketball, playgrounds inside as well as out. So what does all that mean? And is it something that you would like to see? Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, but in addition to those kinds of activities, you know, we talked about education, right? So this top image is the idea that there is the opportunity for I'll call it a mini library or a learning space or an education space. Um, but it actually opens up to the outside. So it's this lovely connected learning space that is now our new community library. It's our community living room. It's our community den. It's our community gathering space. It's where we can come together, right? Um, the image on the bottom. Um, so again, as I said in the earlier meeting, I've heard people talk about like the metaverse. I don't know what that is. You know, I've watched you know my own son sort of go through being a gamer and all of that kind of stuff. But that is now turned into something that is um, beyond my understanding. What does it mean to be computer literate these days? Is completely different than when I was in college and it only meant I knew how to use like Microsoft Word. So, how do we provide activity? How do we provide resources? How do we provide that step up in this kind of space? to then create the next generation of those learners, right? Is this a space for us to do that? That's the question. Because, um, you know, we want to create a little brown girl magic right there on the right. 
well-being tied to how we eat, right? Uh, a community kitchen tied to a community garden, all in this space. There's so much more that these centers mean than they used to. There's so. Much